This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar covering the basics of editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to automatically transcode media and create proxy files during import in Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's say that these are 4K images. Let's just say that. And let's say their shot is H.264, which is the largest file size that H.264 can create. Those are going to be hard to edit, especially if I have an older machine. I want to talk about these settings right up here. This is a recent locations pop-up menu, which allows me to jump from one place to another. If I keep going to the same six locations over and over again, this can save me clicking time. This allows me to go back or forward the same as any browser, you're familiar with how those buttons work. But it's these two that I want to focus on. If I click ingest, which means a background process is going to work, and click the wrench icon, I have four things that I can do. First, I could make a copy of the file with MD5 verification. I can transcode the file, which I'll talk about in a second. I can create proxies, or I can copy the file and create proxies. Remember, transcode allows us to convert from whatever the camera native file is to the file that I want to use for editing. What we are in today is what I call a three codec world. We shoot one codec for the camera, we transcode to a second codec for editing, we transcode to a third codec for distribution. The camera codec is optimized for the camera. The mezzanine or the intermediate codec is optimized for editing and a distribution codec is optimized to make it easy to distribute. So optimize for your camera, that's codec 1. Optimize for editing, that's codec 2. Optimize for distribution, that's codec 3. And to set that optimization, I'm going to transcode. Remember, that means convert. I'm going to work with some presets. One of the very cool things that I'm very excited about is that both Windows and Mac versions of Premiere, starting about a month and a half ago, now fully support Apple ProRes, and ProRes is a great mezzanine or editing codec. If your camera shot it, and you didn't shoot RAW or LOG, and you're not working with HDR, which is a whole different speech, if your camera shot it, ProRes 422 is the best option. It's a very efficient codec. It's a larger file, so you're going to need more storage, but it's optimized for faster rendering, faster effects, better color grading, faster exports. You will save in time what you sacrifice in storage. And then you can determine where those files are going to be stored. You're going to store them in the same place as the project, or you want to set a destination for these files. You have control over that. Most of the time, I would use a preset destination and store them in a in a transcode folder inside the folder that contains the media, but it's totally up to you. The other option that I want to talk about is the creating proxies. You don't need to create proxies if you're editing standard def. You don't need to create proxies if you're editing high def. I recommend you create proxies if you're doing multicam editing, and I also recommend you create proxies if your frame size is larger than 4K. Creating proxies is easy. You say create proxies. Then what preset do you want to use? You definitely don't want to use H.264, though it gives us very, very small files. It's a tough format to edit because of the way that the compression is applied. I recommend, though the file sizes are slightly larger, that you work with ProRes medium resolution proxy. This creates a 1280-720 clip, so it's still HD, but it doesn't have as many pixels as 1080 or 4K or 6K which is good because it decreases the bandwidth and the storage requirements of your storage. So to create proxies, you just simply check ingest and say create proxies. When I click OK and import a file, Adobe Media Encoder in the background fires up separate and invisible to you, and it creates proxy files while you're busy editing inside Premiere. So Premiere will edit the camera native or the master file until the proxy is available, then invisibly to you, providing you've enabled proxies, which we'll learn how to do next week, it will automatically switch to the proxy file and you're editing proxies. It could not be easier. This has been an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar covering the basics of editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. 
For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 281. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. Membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.